We're going live. All right. Uh, should wait. How does the countdown thing work? Like the time start? Uh, just give me a countdown whenever you're ready, and I'll start the timer. Oh, okay. All right. So we're live, right? Yeah. All right. Neat. So. Uh, time starts in three, two, one, go. I have to start my timer as well. So this is Half-Life 2 done Portal, yay. Uh, the basic idea of this run is that you get this here Portal Gun and we load it into the Half-Life 2 maps. And with that comes like a bunch of crazy Portal glitches. So like, if you ever watched like a Portal speedrun you can expect most of the same glitches that you'd find here. So yeah, like just starting off the run, we're gonna go into a couple save glitches over here. And there is a way to skip that train cutscene. Just kind of weird. I think I might have messed this up. Great start. There we go. So we're gonna place a couple portals everywhere. That's not what I was going to do. And that's also not what I was going to do. This is a great start. <laughs> Alright, so we're going to place some portals in a couple specific spots and we're going to set up another save glitch. So we're going to move this here and then I do a different one. I aim here and shoot there. So it lands on this wall and I can just peek into the end of the hallway. Most of these maps is just uh, shooting to the end of the map and then hitting the load trigger. So that one was really quick. Uh, this one's going to be a little more complicated. We're going to do another save glitch to get ourselves out of bounds. Basically, so, if you're not aware what a save glitch is, it's you crouch by the edge of a portal and when you save and load, it kind of separates what you see from where the game actually thinks you are. So it lets you shoot just kind of in places where the other portal is. So you can just completely break the game and get to the end easily with them. Yeah, so we use that a lot during this run, just to bypass some of the annoying areas. Uh, for example, this is a cutscene. This is like a seven minute cutscene in Half-Life 2, if you were to play it normally. But since we have the portal gun, we can just bypass it by shooting out of the level and just doing a couple more portal, sh portal, portal shots. Sorry. Also, I have Lambo Lord here, who's a pretty neat guy. Hi. What I just did there was a PQR, which is if you shoot a portal the same time you enter one out of bounds, uh, you just bump yourself back inbounds. And at the end there, I also did an edge glitch. So, so if he's nearing the very end of the train station maps already, and the run's like not even three minutes in yet, probably. Yeah, I'm not at 2.49 right now. So this is Canals. And uh, this part also goes by very quickly. Most of these chapters go by pretty quick. The longest chapters are probably the cutscenes and maybe City 17 or something like that. So if you haven't noticed already, this run is going by really really quick so I really don't have much time to explain all of the stuff that's happening because of how basically like it's super dense, there's lots of stuff to remember and that was a really weird shot. It's a really dense run and you have to remember a lot of stuff and it's just, well, just lots of stuff compounded into such a short time. Yeah. So... Coming, I think just after two more maps, we're gonna end the canals part and we're gonna go into uh, Water Hazard, which if you've seen a Half-Life 2 speedrun, it's like a lot of ABHing and just 
like doing massive launches everywhere. Uh, this is the portal engine, so we don't really have that same uh, luxury of having lots of air control. So we have to do a bunch of boring portal shots, and some of the maps are quite a bit longer because of it. Here's another save glitch, but this time it's a load glitch. So it's like the same save, save glitch state, but just like we trigger by doing a load in between. As he gets into some of the water hazard maps, it's just really a lot of like long portal shots and stuff. It's kind of not very fun. Yeah. When you're running it. I also want to explain something here. Uh, there's these thing called displacements, which is what makes up like most of these hills and like uh, cool geometry you see everywhere. Uh, those are very very bad because when we place a portal near them, we can fall through them and you're basically stuck there unless you can somehow make it out. And I can almost guarantee that I'll probably get stuck in one of these at one point. So right now I'm just doing a bunch of long portal shots across these maps because they're quite large and we really don't want to do movement around them because it's very painful because we don't have very good air control. It physically hurts to try and like ABH through these maps. Yeah. So in these large open maps we only really use them in uh, like tight spaces sort of like this. Just to do little sequences, we never go really far with them. Probably the furthest we go with ABH slash AFH is in Coasto 3. At least I do, because the long shot there is kind of weird for me. And yeah, that's one of the things that can happen. You can just get stuck on stuff and launch you up there. Also, this game lags quite a bit, and it might also crash, but it should be okay. It should. <laughs> so this is one of the maps where we have really no choice but to ABH and AFH everywhere, because there's like no portal surfaces at all. We can't really do any save glitches, we can't do any portal shots. So we just have to like, hope for the best. This tunnel is probably the worst part of the game. Yeah, there's this upcoming tunnel, this one right here. That you have to like, sort of line up and launch through. And that can happen. There's this one displacement that like, sort of peeks out a little bit. And it can really just mess you up in a bunch of crazy ways. Alright, I'll take it. I didn't get much velocity going through this. Sometimes you can get crazy amounts of speed. But I'm just gonna take this for now. And yeah, you can do a portal shot up there, but the rest of the map is quite a bit slower if you do. So it's actually just faster to do a bunch of AFHing. Also, uh, no one's mentioned this yet. And we skip the trigger at the beginning of the game that makes you take damage oh, right. with the portal gun, so you're basically invincible the whole run. Yeah. So later in the game, around Citadel, one of the last couple chapters, uh, we do a bunch of things with this invincibility. We like skip a big kill trigger, so we can do a really fancy save glitch that saves quite a bit of time. But yeah, basically, whenever I save in this game, it lags, like, just a little bit. It's pretty unstable, if you hadn't guessed yet. Yeah. There's this, like, one part in the prison maps where it's, like, almost guaranteed to crash.
if I like shoot a portal in a pretty precise precise way, but it just happens so often. If it crashes, I imagine he'll just load it back up and load a quick save. Yeah, that's what I usually do. Source split is a very good friend. So upcoming is one of the couple shots that we do that we actually shoot onto a displacement. Uh, you would have noticed that I never shoot onto displacements. It's because they're very weird. Like the geometry doesn't allow for portals to land on them very easily. So you have to shoot in like very precise spots, which can be quite annoying. So I shot my portal right here. And that's like one of the only places on this hill that it will land. Like everywhere else it just doesn't work. And this is another part where we just have to AFH a bit. And you can also get stuck everywhere. There's a lot of places you can get stuck. Moose says you're doing great. I agree. Thank you, Moose. Oh, I might actually do the cool thingy or not. So if you have like a lot of speed going through that like area, it actually is faster than... Oh, like that. I just fell... Uh, just fell into a displacement, which is really weird because that's flat ground. But this map is usually faster doing portal shots, but if you have lots of speed then you can get it done even faster by just moving around. Lol, that was bad. This is also a pretty bad tunnel because this is like your only like speed uh, and it, really any place that you can build speed because in these tunnels you have to either rely on these like dirt patches or on the side which is very inconsistent because you can fall off of it very quick uh, this part we actually do AFHing because it's faster and we have more momentum to carry out into this little area How am I flying forward? So, uh, basically, there's this trick called ABHing, which is uh, accelerated back hopping, looks like this. Uh, which basically just tricks the game that you're looking the other way and you can like gain crazy amounts of speed. So, uh, some other people found out that you can do it sideways and forwards. I'm not sure if there's any other directions. But you can do it both those ways, and it still gives you a bunch of speed. So I'm doing AFHing, because it's by far the easiest one to do in this sort of engine. Normally in Portal it's hard, but since it's Half-Life 2 done Portal, you have Sprint, so it's like really easy to start one off. Yeah. Also, I landed really far into the water, so I have to walk all the way here. That's another displacement shot. Alright, so this is the first like actual cutscene of the game. We have to wait through this like just okay, exposition, which is very exciting. Hello? Take it easy in there. If you've seen a Half-Life 2 speedrun, it's kind of similar, except a couple of bumps. in this first part where Mossman is just walking because she can get to her uh, button that she needs to press. Similar to our Kalabi Yao model, 
but they failed to catch you in the dark energy equations. It's the best meme, evil squirrel. Once they're here, they're dependent on local transportation. If they knew what we were doing with entanglement. So there's some parts where teleporting really isn't even worth it, like when she walks around that corner. You can do it, but it's just not very worth it. So now we just go down this elevator. There's a room that we sit in for about like three minutes or something like that. Uh, where it's just Eli, Alex, and Mossman talking about something. We don't really care about that. Uh, and all we have to do really is just a bunch of teleports. After this cutscene is spooky town. Oh yeah, Ravenholm ends in like a minute. Yeah, Ravenholm's a very short chapter. Because portal shots are OP. I never thought it would take you this long to get back to me. Welcome to the lab anyway. It's not Black Mesa, but it served us well enough. It's going to be a lot Also, cool fun fact, it says Dijon Dash on my portal gun. Also, uh, it doesn't really matter if I hold, hold this little splinter with, uh, the pistol or the portal gun. It's just that, uh, there's a portal gun view model when you hold it with the portal gun. So I like holding it like this. So this is one of the portal bumps we do. Uh, Alex spawns in this room, like just behind the door. So we do a quick portal bump to have access to teleporter just before. Like the door opens. Like that's if it's like best case scenario. Most of the time the door opens before she can uh, spawn, I guess. Hard record, usually you can't place a portal under the NPCs. Um, they found a way kind of recently to teleport NPCs, but so far no one's found a way to make it useful, like in the cutscenes. But yeah, they don't just like fall through. Yeah, like you can shoot a portal under Alex. And, well, she'll walk this way, and it's- oh, there goes my splinter. That splinter was something called a gib, so it disappears if you don't look at it, so that's very unfortunate. So NPCs don't actually get affected by portals, which is kind of expected, I guess, but props still do. So you can, like, throw stuff through portals, and uh, catch stuff through portals, all that cool stuff. So now we're just waiting for Mossman to come out of this room, uh, cause she's like doing some work or whatever, and then she's gonna yell at Alex to, I don't know, do something. So we're just gonna stand by this door, and then we can run inside and teleport her. Yeah, some props aren't great, but you can still teleport with like, every pro prop. Well Try a new Someone orientation. You the combine by Richter. <laughs> are you blaming me? No, not at all. It was a calculation error, not a mechanical problem. Then maybe you should let me do the calculations next time as well as installing it. Alex, really? Sometimes I think you deliberately misunderstand me. <clears throat> Alex, why don't you take Gordon along and give maybe him a evil squirrel? I don't really know. I haven't tested with NPCs, like ragdolls or whatever. The zero point energy field manipulator is not a toy asset. Ugh, let's get out of here. Okay, this is another good time save teleport here. I might get it. So I see you've met Dr. Teleporting is like a double edged sword, really. Like, you can either slow the NPC down or you can speed them up. So, it's a little risky, and it's a little precise. Like, where you hit them in the head. Like, you want to hit a little bit ahead, but still, like, on top of them. So, I'm going to shoot a portal here, in this, like, ramp, uh, for the next little
about handling hazardous materials, but we mainly use it for heavy. So we need to grab the gravity gun for two very important. It's designed for handling hazardous materials, but we mainly use it for heavy. So we need to grab the gravity gun for two very important tricks in the run. Uh, one of them is the Prison 08 skip, which I've recently found, and the other one is Podride skip in Citadel, both of which save about two, three minutes or something like that. We're afraid. Close your eyes. Not those zombies. Also, you can get stuck in props very easily with portals. I also find found this hot portal bump, and I am forever proud of it. Saves like three seconds. At yeah, most. <laughs> something like that. All right, so we're about like halfway through Ravenholm already. That map usually takes about like two minutes or something. Uh, in a normal speedrun, and like maybe a minute and a half if you're good, and we can f clear it in like 20 seconds. So Portal Gun is like actually super OP in these maps. We're gonna place that portal there, and place one here, and set up for another save glitch. We're gonna shoot down to the end of this mine, and up there. Now, for some reason, if you do downwards clipping, like save load clipping, uh, when you're inside a portal, you get teleported like way far down. So we Basically can use this. Into the map. Yeah, we can use this to our advantage. Like that save load clip doesn't for some reason, but the ones in Citadel do, and I messed that shot. I messed it again. Don't worry, guys. I'm good. Coming up is Coast, which is just a bunch of really long, far away shots and the aviation, basically. Yeah. Uh, another thing with portals is that they sort of like temporarily like put you out of bounds or something. I actually don't know how to describe it. But we placed a portal on top of a level change, and when we walked into that portal, we uh, just hit the level change trigger. I'm not exactly sure how that works, but it just does. Alright, so this is like the one ABH section in Coast, if I don't mess it up. I think that it was just had to do with that portal getting fizzled on the level transition or something. Something like that. Portals are weird. Alright, so this is kind of slow, but it's still okay. We can make it. In Half-Life 2... Wait. Oh yeah, in Half-Life 2 you'd be taking damage, but we can get like... Super slow launches and still make it. Hat, uh... ABH is through Coast 03, but there is a long shot. Friendly reminder. Yeah, there is one, but I don't know why I don't do it. I just kind of don't like it. Also, fun fact, the first coast map is called Coast 01, but the second coast map is actually called Coast 03. Uh, I don't think anyone knows why, it just is because Gabe Newell or whatever. So we can walk up this slope, good map design, and then we just shoot a portal to the end. Alright, so this is one of the first long shots in Coast. We line ourselves into this corner and then we like shoot at a really arbitrary place. We hope it lands.
One of those lag spikes. I think my game might have crashed. Huh. Nope. That's dead. Task manager. This happens all the time, don't worry about it. I do have a save, so it should be fine. Unless it corrupts my save. And that has happened before. Which is very unfortunate. Then just do like, map whatever bone it crashed on. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's working. And my timer's working, so that's very good. Oh yeah, sound gets like, messed up whenever you relaunch the game and like, try and go fast. This game is very strange. It is in fact two games combined together, so it's got issues. Yeah. So this is another long shot we're going to do. We have to line up on this like, uh, two angle corner, and we shoot like in between two branches and hope it lands somewhere. It didn't. The shot is probably the hardest one. Because it's the most precise, I think. Oh my god. Alright, this is the one, I believe. Oh my god, okay. It runs roughly halfway over at this point. Yeah, I'm 24 minutes in into a 46-28 world record. There we go. So, that shot's really precise because it's kind of uh, arbitrary where we shoot. And we have to land on a displacement, so it's very strange. I'm gonna route a better shot for that at some point soon. Yeah, the routing for this game is, like, suboptimal at the moment, but it's still good enough to be a fun run. So we're gonna shoot on another displacement. Oh, I actually landed it. And we're at the end of the level. That last map, you would normally do, like, a 10 minute long fight, but in both runs, Half-Life 2 and Half-Life 2 Done Portal, we can just skip it by going down that cliff side. This is another uh, displacement shot. This one's also very strange where you shoot. There you go. Also, the reason why I'm not falling through the world is that Valve created these things called clip brushes, which are just invisible walls, which are good and bad in some places. And I'm gonna shoot on, like, Actually, that's not a clip brush, it's just sort of an invisible wall. Because you can't shoot on clip brushes, I think. Yeah, you can't. Oh, okay. So yeah, we just have to go through this like invisible maze. We do another displacement shot down here. You can't shoot while zoom, so I'm zooming in and zooming out really quick. And I got stuck in the displacement again. Displacements are like the worst part about coast and canals, to be honest. Alright, so this is the last long shot of the game. And it's very exciting because this one is kind of weird. And it's also the one that lasts the longest. It's like a 20 second long shot. And it lands on a displacement, so it's two times the fun. Don't want to get hit by that zombie. I've actually been hit by that zombie, and it's killed a run before. It made me very sad. So this is the first prison map. There's normally a huge helicopter fight, but obviously, skip it. And Prison is a lot of save watchers and portal bumps. Yeah, it probably has the most so far. 
So we can actually open that door during the loading screen, which is very nice because it doesn't, like, I don't know, do something. This first map of prison is pretty straightforward because we just walk through everything. This second one also, we just do a portal bump over here. And there's normally a huge antline fight that lasts maybe two minutes as well. Uh, but yet again, we skip it. Because why not? These first couple prison maps are just really straightforward. Like some of these last like less than 10 seconds. For example, this one. Oh yeah, this next map is where I can crash. Okay, I didn't. Good, good. Alright, so this is like the first uh, big save glitch of prison. We're gonna put one up there, put one down here. Do a save glitch. And we want to shoot as high as we can. And then, uh, I think I messed it up, yeah. We want to shoot on top of this, like, roof. Trigger it. We do another save glitch here, which also skips the entire map. You can sort of see a pattern coming along. 90% of this run is just not doing what you're supposed to do. Yeah, because even in Half-Life 2 speedruns, you have to sort of play by the game's rules, but this you can just avoid everything completely. Alright. So we're going to shoot all the way across the map, and you can actually see the map. Uh-oh. Okay, I almost messed that up really bad, but I saved it. Alright, so this is the last map of prison. Uh, it's like a cutscene, like half of a cutscene really, now. And we do this save glitch to get inside of the cutscene. And now here comes the hot new strat, trademark. We can do a save glitch right here. We have to walk forward a bit or else we cancel it out and the trick doesn't work. But we can grab these turrets early so we can start the final cutscene of this cutscene uh, earlier. And if I can actually grab it, there we go. So the elevator would start moving up maybe two minutes into this cutscene and that's a lot of explosions. But it start moving up maybe like halfway through this cutscene, but we can trigger it at the very beginning. Theoretically cutting this cutscene in half, but that's not true because... Uh, just because. Oh yeah, Eli Vance is in here and he dies very easily. So we have to kill all these Combine soldiers and we have to catch their grenades to prevent the grenades from killing him, because that just softlocks the game. Alright, so I've done it. What I've done is I've blocked Mossman's console. She normally comes here and types some stuff there, but now I blocked it so she just stands there and whatnot. Alright. So now I have a pretty neat setup for this part. We can line ourselves up here, and we can sort of line this crossbar up with this, like, guard thing, like this shield, or whatever. And when it reaches there, we knock that out of the way, so Mossman can start her, like, 30 second cutscene or whatever. And that gives us just enough time for this, uh, cart, or teleporter, to reach the top and come back down. So, this is like the longest part of the cutscene, and it's like a minute. So, right now, we just punt that out of the way, and she starts a cutscene. So, we sort of delay it, and so she can start it later, and the thing happens. This cutscene skip is part of the reason that Hat was able to get such a good time recently. Yeah, old world record was like 50-54 by Lambo. 
Uh, but recently I found this skip, and I just did general improvements everywhere, and I was able to cut it down by four minutes, which is pretty nice. Alright, so they run into nothing, and uh, shortly she'll run out because of whatever. This is going to reach the top, it's going to start coming down, Eli's going to go into the floor, and we will, and we're done the skip, trademark. This takes a while to open, for some reason. But we just stand here. On. And Kleiner opens the thing for us. And then launches us back up without Alex. We were supposed to have Alex like the entirety of prison, but we didn't. Because, yes. And she doesn't spawn, which is kind of strange. Screw Alex anyway. Who yeah. Her? I did try playing this mod with her, and she just gets in the way whenever you do like save glitches or whatever. But she does spawn here. Uh, since I'm bad at this game, I can't do the portal bump uh, past this door. So I just wait it out. It's like 10 seconds anyway. Alright, so this is the start of City 17. It's like... It's pretty difficult, I think. It's mostly movement stuff, and just a couple of portal peeking. It's also pretty laggy. Yeah, this is the most render heavy part of the run, so I might lag quite a bit here. Oops. Also, I picked up the gun, which is something you don't want to do. Oh, I just accidentally quantum crouched. Yay me. Alright. Coming up in a couple maps will be the uh, setup for pod ride skip where you have to take a box all the way to where the skip happens. Yeah. You have to like transport a box, uh, a couple maps, to do this one skip that also saves a couple minutes. So we get the gravity gun to do two major skips, which is very exciting, because before it was like optional to grab the gravity gun, but you would get a slow time. Uh oh, this is bad. Oh my god. I have to do like a weird portal peek thing. If the sky will move. Okay. Meaned by the NPC. Yeah, NPCs are the worst because they have- oh god, I forgot to do the thing. Lol. Alright, well I'm losing a little time here. Anyway. But NPCs really just do get in the way and you can sometimes like, just get yourself stuck on them. Which is super annoying. Which is why skipping the graveyard in Ravenholm is so good. Because there's like, 30 or 20 zombies there. And so they can really get in the way. This is also the loudest part of the run, because there is lots of bombings happening. Happening. Oops. There we go. So that's another cure.
Yeah, there's a surprising amount of displacements in City 17, which is quite strange. He can sometimes push you into the portal, he can sometimes push you out of the portal. It's really strange what he does. Alright, so this is the, like, bank or museum or whatever. And we can obviously just skip it by shooting portals everywhere. Because portals aren't affected by these uh, force fields. So you can literally just shoot past them. We do an edge. How many maps there are in this chapter? Yeah, there's 13 maps. City 17, I think. Oh my god. Doors are really weird. They can cause your game to lag quite a bit. These loads are crazy long. These maps are also really box preserve section. Yeah, this is the map where we grab the box, then we have to hold it on, hold on to it for two more maps. So we grab this box. And we just bring it with us for a little while. Oops. So we can actually just walk through this thing if we jump high enough. And we're gonna set up for another save glitch by placing a portal on the ground. We can also sort of move ourselves using save glitch, so I'm going to place the portal in a good spot where I can just jump over the displacement and not get stuck. Alright, so this is the pod ride skip map. Uh, it's quite tricky, I'm not going to lie. So I might mess it up once or twice. Pod ride skip can also make your game crash if you do it wrong. Yeah. Like, if you jump, like, in the wrong spot, uh, it just crashes your game. There's a lot of things in this game that can just kill you, crash your game. So I'm gonna place the portal, like, there, or something. Then I'm gonna throw this box there, grab the gravity gun, and... Alright, I got it. So basically, if we have like a prop being held on with the gravity gun, it just doesn't put us in a vehicle. Like, it doesn't matter, it can be a pod, it can be a car, it can be the airboat or whatever. It just doesn't uh, put us in there, and it actually just leaves us be. So it's very useful for this part, and it's like, uh, before that big skip in Prison 08 was found, this was like the only reason why we got it. How much time do you think it saves? Like at least a, over a minute, probably. If not yeah. Two. I spam crouch here so I can fall like just a bit faster. Where am I? All right, so this is one of the save glitches that come really handy with the uh, God mode. If I were to fall down here, uh, I would have died instantly, like miles up. So uh, having infinite health. Not infinite health, just uh, god mode, like legit god mode or whatever, is really helpful in that part. This is another not cheating. Yeah, yeah, trust us. <laughs> it's another instance of using the portal save load to fall down further. These citadel maps are just quite a couple save glitches that we do to get around the place like really really quick 
Oh, I might be on the wrong side. Nah, that's good. And in a minute here will be the longest cutscene ever. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. What did I just do? <laughs> Alright. So this is probably the hardest Citadel save glitch. Because if you mess up the positioning of the last portal, it can really mess you up bad. So this is like invisible hallway that we shoot all the way down towards. And there's this little like spot we can shoot all the way to the top of that tower. Then we can just save load down and I missed it, but there we go. So that's the last loading screen of the game, unless I have to reload a save or whatever. But this is the last map, Reno 1, and it's mostly just a cutscene. Like, the only real part that we can mess up now is, uh, like, getting bad orbs, which is completely random. Until you're where he wants you, there's nothing you can do. I'm sorry, Gordon. Yeah, instead of, um, grabbing onto the orbs with the physics gun and shooting them at the little core in the middle, like you do in a regular Half-Life speedrun, we have to use the gravity gun and, like, punt the orbs towards the thing through, like, by standing in a portal, and it's kind of sketchy. Yeah, because for whatever reason, the fizz gun, well not fizz gun, the, uh, like uh, the super gravity gun, that's it, uh, doesn't exist in this port for whatever reason. So it's yeah, I guess kind of, good. yeah, it's really weird to punt them. It's like super random how it launches, and it's also random how often the orbs come. Like sometimes orbs just don't appear at all, and uh, sometimes it's like god orbs. First you leave me Dude, M Sushi. Doorstep of my oldest friend, then you deliver yourself. If I'd known you were going to come straight up to my office, I wouldn't have bothered hunting you in the first place. So and believe it or not, your game friend. actually could you crash in this cutscene. I've had it before. I don't know what it was, but it just did. This game can crash like anywhere. Thanks to you, we have everything we need in that regard. You are more than qualified to finish his research yourself. What neither you nor I can do is convince that rabble in the streets... Like that, the blue gravity gun doesn't exist. It's just a model that exists. But once you pick it up, it's just a normal gravity gun we've been using all along. Eli, if you won't do the right thing for the good of all people, maybe you'll do it for one of us. So we actually don't know how Alex got captured, because she was never with us in the first place. And we like ditched her all the way back in Kleiner's lab. So she should- <laughs> she must obviously be faster than us. Spoilers, by the way. Oh yeah. From a 2004 game. your mother's eyes, but your father's stubborn nature. You haven't seen a bit of it yet. Really? Well, let's see how well it serves you on the far side of a combined portal. Go ahead, Bree. If that's the worst you can do, send us both through your port. Oh, it's hardly the worst. But you might find that hard to believe once you get there. It isn't necessary. I agree. It's a total waste. Fortunately, the resistance has shown it is willing to accept a new leader. And this one has proven to be a fine pawn for those who control him. No! Don't listen to him, Gordon! How about it, Doug Freeman? <sighs> Did you realize your contract is open to the highest bidder? Gordon would never make any kind of deal with you. I understand if you don't wish to discuss this in front of your friends. I'll send them on their way, and then we can talk openly. <sighs> don't start running. Dad, I'm so sorry. Alex, see you later. <laughs> Judith? What do you think you're doing? We're doing what I could never do alone. We're stopping you. Yes. Guards, get in here. They know you betrayed them. They'll turn on you. Judith, Dr. Mossman, please. I'm sorry, Wallace. You're all out of time. Don't. You fool! What? 
So I actually have to give myself the portal gun there uh, when I exit that cutscene because we lose all our weapons uh, regardless of whatever we do. It's allowed, promise. Yeah, it's like the only way we can get it in the beginning anyway, so we sort of need it. So there is this strat where you can do a quantum crouch and shoot a portal out of bounds. But I'm like really bad at it, so I'm not gonna risk it in a marathon. And I'm just gonna do this little cutscene. It doesn't, it like saves a decent amount of time, I think. It saves like less than a minute, probably. Oh, okay. So it's worth it if you're doing runs, but not super great if you're just doing whatever. So you'll see that the gravity gun has now turned orange again, and <laughs> it's still orange. In Half-Life 2, you would like climb over this barrier, but we can obviously just portal past it. There is an invisible wall here, so we can't actually walk here. Reminder, this isn't a mod, it's its own unpack. Yeah, we sort of just ditch Alex up there by herself. If you do the quantum crouch strat, you can actually uh, finish the game with Alex and Dr. Breen in the same room, despite Dr. Breen being right there. So this is the worst part ever, because we have to shoot these orbs at that like uh, area, I guess. And it's super random how the orbs come, and like how this thing launches them. Because sometimes it doesn't launch, sometimes it does. quite strange, so you have to like really press down or else it's just gonna not register. Like if you spam, it doesn't work. I've managed to hit like all his shields with this. There we go. Alright, so time's coming up very shortly. All right, so time is now. GG. Nice. GG. Fifty-three oh five on my end. Oh, that's not bad. I got fifty-three oh three on my timer. In-game time was forty-eight fifty-three. If anyone cares. So G-Man's here now. We can just portal away from him. and fall to this, like, area. For some reason, if you look down, it's, like, all out of bounds. But yeah, that's Half-Life 2 done Portal. It's a pretty fun run. It's still, like, in its early stages, and there's lots of uh, optimization that can happen. But it's so far pretty interesting, I think. So we need your help. Yeah. Like, there's tons of routing opportunities and stuff like that. And, like, just doing the run is pretty fun. IMO, at least. Oh, and my game crashed. <laughs> what a great ending. Nice. <laughs> oh. That's, like, it, I think. Next run is, like, Super Mario Land, isn't it? Yeah, Mario Land 2. Nice. And that's gonna be cool. Alright, thanks guys. No problem. No